it's our hope that as, you're, as you experience the presence of the Lord here, that you will take steps to grow in your relationship with him and in your relationship with other people. And that's a constant prayer as we gather together and to lift up the name of Jesus is we just want to grow. We want to learn more about who God is as he's revealed in the scriptures. And I just want to say here at the beginning, if you're here today and you're just checking out Christianity, you, you're really not sure about things or you're just coming back to the faith of your childhood, you're not sure if there's a God or not sure what the Bible is all about, I want you to know that well, I'm glad you're here. And I'm glad you're here and you're, you're welcome here with your doubts, your questions. Your, and we just pray that God will, will speak to you and reveal himself to you in truth and in power and transform your life in a radical way. That's our prayer here today and every time that we meet together. But today I want to talk to you specifically just for a few minutes about the sounds of the season. Everybody say sounds of the season. Now, there's a word that's used over and over again in many of the Christmas songs that we sing. And in fact, we, we, we sang a bunch of songs earlier that had this word in it. And I just wanted to see if you can help me identify this word. In that song, Joy to the World, it's, the lyrics goes, Joy to the world, the Lord is come. We sang a song called Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Some of the lyrics go, Christ by heaven, by highest heaven adored, Christ the everlasting Lord. Okay, you finding out? You, I'm giving you some clues here, okay? So we sang also, o, o come all ye faithful. Some of those lyrics are, O come let us adore him, Christ the the Lord. We sang Mary, did you know? And didn't they do an awesome job with that? Uh, some of the lyrics in there ask the question, Mary, did you know that your baby boy is Lord of all creation? A little bit later, we're going to sing the song Silent Night. Boy, I love that song. And the lyrics go, Silent Night, Holy Night, Son of God, Love's Pure Light, radiant beams from thy holy face with the dawn of redeeming grace, Jesus Lord, at thy birth, Jesus, Lord, at thy birth. Here's what I want to declare over us all here tonight, this Christmas Eve Eve. It's this. Jesus is Lord. Say it with me. Jesus is Lord. In fact, 740 times in the New Testament, Jesus is referred to as Lord. In fact, one of the, one of the first uh, mentions of it in the New Testament comes from one of the classic Christmas verses that I want to share with you now. And follow along with me if you, if you have your notes with you. It's from Luke chapter 2, verse 10 and 11. It says this, But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the, the Lord. He is the Messiah. He is the Lord. You see, at the beginning of the story, it's established that Jesus, the Son of God, the Savior of the world, He is the Messiah. He is the Lord. And here's the big question I just want, to th want us to think about for the next few minutes here. And it's this. I, I, I want us to think about this. If Jesus is Lord, what does that mean to us? Okay, if he is really Lord of Lords and King of Kings, I mean, what does that mean to us in our everyday life? If Jesus is Lord and we sing about it at Christmas and, and, and if he really is Lord and we're saying, Lord Jesus, how does that affect our marriage? If we're dating, how does that affect our dating relationship? If we're finishing our finals at school, well, how does that affect our test taking at school? How does that affect us if we're buying Christmas presents? I mean, what does it mean that Jesus is my Lord? What does it mean that he is my Lord? What, is his, what does his lordship mean to me? And what does his lordship mean to you? The Greek word for Lord is the word kurios. All right, everybody say kurios. <clears throat> it means supreme authority. Did I say that wrong? Okay. Supreme authority or master or controller. 
We'll talk, we'll talk about that in just a minute. Or Lord, the supreme authority, the Lord of all, the master or controller. Now, I can already imagine for some of us these words like uh, supreme authority, master, controller, they can kind of bother us a little bit because Jesus is a controller. Well, I don't want any con- anybody controlling me, right? Because if he's the controller, he's got some competition, and I'm willing to fight for a little bit of that control because I want to be in control. But, th- but thankfully, let me just go ahead and tell you, I don't have a control problem at all. Oh, my goodness. If you believe that, uh, there's oceanfront property in Arizona that I want to try to sell you, okay? Now, I'm not a control freak whatsoever. because As long as everything goes my way, and as long as everybody does what I want them to do, I don't have a problem with control at all. Okay, can anybody relate to that? Okay, so I've got a little bit of a control problem. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you up front I got to be careful about being the, in control. I mean, think about it like when you're driving a car. I, I cannot stand to be in the passenger seat when, when we're going down the road, okay? Because why? I'm not in control. If you come over to my house and you try to pick up my remote, there's going to be problems. There's going to be issues because the controller belongs to me. And if you're going to take that control away, we're going to have issues, okay? So those of you who like to make lists and get things done in your list, like don't mess with my list. I made my list. I've got them in priority order, and I'm working them on. I'm, I'm checking them off, working them out. Don't mess with my list because I want to be in control and my kids oh my goodness I want to be in control of my kids like I want Christmas morning to just be great I want them to come and, and wake up at a, at a decent hour of the morning and not so so darn early um, but let me have some coffee first and then I would just want them to come down from upstairs with with their teeth brushed and their hair just perfect and they want them to come down, and I'm going to hear the angels sing. Hallelujah. It's going to be a great day. There's not going to be any fighting or arguing or anything. And everybody's going to be grateful for the gifts that they get. I'm a little bit of a control freak. Can anybody relate in the room? Okay. <clears throat> I don't know how it would be for you, but chances are there are some people who have a control problem, control challenge with me here in this room. But what does it mean? What does it mean that Jesus is the supreme authority? What does it mean that Jesus is the master, the controller, the Lord? What does it mean to make Jesus the Lord of your life? I want to just pause right here and get technical for just a second. I don't want to make anybody uncomfortable for using that that phrase, make Jesus the Lord of your life. But I want you to think about something. Uh, Technically, we don't make Jesus Lord. Okay, think about this. We do not make him Lord. God made him Lord a long time ago. He's already Lord. We don't make him Lord. What we do is we surrender to who he already is. Right? We surrender to his lordship. Does that make sense? So how do we how do we do that? How do we do that in practical terms? I want us to think about two different levels of surrender. Okay, this is not a a typical Christmas message that you may hear, but this is what the Lord put on my heart. So I hope you receive it uh, with the with the love and joy that I'm going to share it with you uh, with. But the first level of surrender is this, the partially surrendered life, the partially surrendered life. I'm afraid that and it burns me, it saddens me that this is where the majority of American Christians probably live. Many people in other parts of the world that I've been to and I've seen and I've read about, there's, there's this, this uh, intense devotion and passion for the Lord, especially where in places of the world where persecution is more intense. But, but where we live, there's a lot of what I would call casual Christians, right? There are, there's a lot of what I would call cultural Christians. And maybe a good term for that would be a Christian atheist, Think about this with me. A Christian atheist is somebody who says, I believe in God, but I live my life in a way in which that communicates he does not exist. Like I say, Lord, Lord, but my life doesn't match up with that at all. This is the partially 
surrendered life. And I want us to look at a passage of scripture in Luke chapter 6 together. This is a sobering uh, teaching from the Lord Jesus in Luke 6. We want us to look at this together because the Lord may be speaking to us tonight specifically about this partially surrendered life. He says this, why do you call me Lord, Lord, there's our word again, right? Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and you do not do what I say? Uh Uh-oh, you love me, don't you? Okay, I love you too. All right, here we go. This is tough for some of us. Uh, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and you do not do what I say? As for everyone who comes to me and hears my words and puts them into practice, I'll show you what what they are like. And he describes them. He says, they are like a man building a house who dug down deep and laid the foundation on a rock. When the flood came and the torrent stuck, struck that house, but, could, but it could not shake it because the house was well built. You see, that man built his house upon the rock. The rock is knowing that Jesus is Lord and putting his words into practice. Not just saying, Lord, Lord, but actually putting into practice the things that we say with our lips. It goes on to say, but the one who hears my words and then does not put them into practice is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. How many of you know it's not smart? It's very foolish to start building anything without a foundation, right? So the moment that the torrent struck that house, it collapsed, and its destruction was complete. I want you to think about this scripture with me, because Jesus is saying in this, in this passage of scripture, why are you just giving me lip service, right? Why are you calling me Lord, Lord, and, but you don't do what I ask you to do? Why? And Jesus is like, I don't want your lip service, I want your life service, Okay, I don't want your hot air. I want your heart. Is this okay for a Christmas Eve Eve message? Okay, so I don't want a bunch of talk. I want I want some action. I want you to actually not just talk the talk, but I want you to learn to walk the walk. Why is it that you're calling me Lord and then you go off and you live your life however you want to live? And unfortunately, today. As I said, it burdens me, but I believe there are many people who would say, you know, I believe in Jesus as, as Lord. He is the Lord, but, but they still want to be in control. They still want to be the master of their own lives, and they want to do whatever they want to do. And uh, I believe, I believe the, Lord, and the Lord is Jesus, but I'm not going to trust him with my life. I'm not going to trust him with the things that really mean something to me. I'm not going to trust him with my marriage. I'm not going to trust him with my finances. I'm not going to trust him with my future. I'm not going to trust him. I call him Lord, but I'm not fully going to trust him. And we end up living this partially surrendered life. And we actually, we start to, uh, I thought about this. I tried to get a little creative in the sermon today. So uh, I thought about this, and, and I made up this ver- version of the Bible, okay? Now, remember, this is not real, okay? So don't email me and call me a heretic, all right? So, but from the partially surrendered version of the Bible, we can read something like this. Trust in the Lord with some of your heart. Lean on your own understanding. And in some of your ways, acknowledge him. And you can make your own paths straight. <laughs> now, if you're, if you're kind of new to church, I just want to tell you, I just made that, made that up, okay? It's not actual scripture. But, but I want, the truth is, Jesus is not a part-time Lord. And he doesn't want part-time followers. Amen? So here is what I, what I want us to do just for a moment. And I want us to just be very open to what God may be speaking to each one of our hearts tonight as we ask this question. And it's up on the screen. I just want us to ask this very honestly. What have I not surrendered to the Lord? <clears throat> is there any area of my life that I have not surrendered to Him? Could be a different, lots of different things. But I want you to just be really, really open and honest in this moment. And even put a name on whatever it is. What have I not surrendered to the Lordship of Jesus Christ? Because the truth is, 
probably all, almost all of us in one way or another are living a partially surrendered life. Now I want to talk about the next level. And this is what Jesus wants for us. This is, what, this is the level that Jesus is taking us all to. And I'd call it this, simply, the fully surrendered life. The fully surrendered life. Fully surrendered. Think about that. I'm all in. I'm full on, holding nothing back. I'm sold out. My life does not belong to me, but it belongs to him. And he has my 100% commitment. There is nothing I'm holding back. Like, I love Jesus so much, I'll do anything he says for me to do. I'll go anywhere. I'll say anything. I'll change whatever he wants me to change. Whatever his Holy Spirit convicts me of, I'm saying, Lord, inspect me, and so that I may repent of anything that does not please you. My life is no longer mine, but it belongs to you. I'm sold out. I'm fully surrendered to your Lordship. You guys still following with me? Okay. Paul said it like this in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. He said, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. <clears throat> the life that I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Wow. Complete Total surrender. A life of all-in commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ. Because here's the deal. Jesus shed his blood for you. He died for you. And he offers you the gift of free uh, salvation by grace. Okay? It's by grace that we're saved through faith. And it's not by works so that no one can boast. It is the gift of God that he has given to each one of us. Salvation cost us nothing, but it cost Jesus everything. But when we say yes to his invitation for salvation, think about it. Our, our, we, no, we no longer have rights. We no longer have the rights to our lives. We belong to him, in other words. He paid for us. He ransomed us. And so you belong to him, and you surrender to his lordship and he becomes the master he becomes the supreme authority in your life he becomes the controller of your life and i'm burdened by this just 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 this casual approach to jesus he's that six pound eight ounce baby jesus right jesus is my buddy jesus is my homeboy okay you ever heard that no, 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 listen, Jesus is not just a little baby who was born in a manger. He's not just the Lord Jesus dying on the cross for our sins. What we need to remember and to understand from the word of God is that Jesus is a soon coming king. He is a soon coming king. He is conquering. He is ruling. He is reigning. He is supreme in authority. He's coming back with a sword and a name uh, that's written on him that says he is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And my friends, Jesus means business. He means business. And so we don't just come to him casually as a casual Christian. And we don't just say, Lord, Lord, and then do whatever we want. Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs> Our lives, if you're a Christian, if you've said yes to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, our lives do not belong to us. It belongs to him. Jesus is the Lord. And we read out of the correct version of the Bible, and it says this in Proverbs 3, trust in the Lord. Everybody say the Lord. With all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. Amen. I want to invite the uh, worship team back up. We're going to enter into a time of prayer in just a moment. But beloved, I want to tell you that there's no greater joy than a life fully surrendered to the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no greater life than the one that is completely his. It's not always easy. Anybody testify to that? It's not always easy to walk that road. But talk about lasting peace. 
Talk about a sense of purpose in your life. Talk about uh, just deep and abiding love and acceptance we receive from the Lord. Talk about true joy and true fulfillment. All of this is only found right there in a fully surrendered life to Jesus the Lord. Amen. Amen. Everybody say this with me. Jesus is Lord. Say it one more time like you mean it. Jesus is Lord. Now I want you to make it personal and say, Jesus is my Lord. One one more time. Jesus is my Lord. Now if you just said that because I told you to say it and it's not true for you, I want you to think about this, okay? It says this in Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. If Listen. If you're here tonight and you don't know the Lord Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, I want you to think about this verse right here. It says this, if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is, what? That Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is your, with your heart that you believe and are justified and it is with your mouth that you profess and are saved. My friends, I want you to hear tonight very clearly. Jesus is Lord. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. He wants life for you. He wants you to experience all that he is because there's no greater joy. There's no greater peace. There's no greater uh, sense of fulfillment that you will ever have outside of a fully surrendered life to Lord Jesus. Amen. All right. Would you stand with me, please? I like to always give these opportunities at the end of my messages because I believe that the Lord brings people here to hear the word of God, maybe for the first time or the first time in a long time. And maybe you're here tonight for whatever reason, and you're ready to just say, Jesus Christ is my Lord tonight. I'm ready to declare with my mouth and to believe in my heart who Jesus really is tonight. And if that's you, I want you to just repeat this prayer after me. There's nothing magical about these words, but if you mean it sincerely from the bottom of your heart, the Lord will save you in an instant. He will save you. You will be born again. You will have a home in heaven if you believe upon the Lord Jesus tonight. He says, let's pray this prayer, okay? Heavenly Father, come on, say it with me. Heavenly Father, I repent for being master of my own life and living separate from you. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead. I receive you, Jesus, as my Lord and my Savior. I welcome you, Holy Spirit, into my life to rescue and empower me and to restore me to intimacy with my Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Can we praise the Lord tonight? Hallelujah.